Welcome back, traders. The second portion of our show, Mark and Movers. Uh, looks like we got a retailer, a lot of retailers on the move here reporting earnings. Dennis, where would you like there to start? Is a few, yeah, there is a few retailers reporting here this morning here, uh, Joel. Walmart reporting earnings this morning. Their stock is trading down about 84 cents right now, clo- uh, trading at 58.05 after closing at 58.89. I think this 58 looks like it's going to provide some support here, uh, maybe some initial support, and then I'd probably use that for my swing number. Gets back out of that 59 area, there's huge resistance up there, so I would say from settlement 58.89 all the way to 59 uh, is going to see some major resistance. What do you think on Walmart, Joel? Okay, well, Walmart, uh, we got some pretty simple setups here. Uh, we did have a double bottom in the stock here at the 5836 level. Uh, that was taken out during the pre-market here, currently trading below that at 5805. So let's use that as your first resistance point. Uh, below that, in the pre-market, uh, we did hit 5761, and you do have a low uh, back from a few days ago here at the 5751 level. Uh, so let's call the range here about uh, 57.50 to 58.30 in Walmart today. Reporting earnings here as well. Stock is trading up pretty significantly, up uh, 45, 50 cents. Uh, it's trading uh, as high as $39. Pulled back a little ways from there at 38.73. Uh, stock had a good earnings report. It actually raised its dividend as well. So looking at the chart here, this $38, you know, is a nice little breakout there yesterday. Um, 39.38 is your 52-week high. Major resistance up yep. there, but I think you're going to see initial resistance at 39. I actually see some size forming there in the books. There's about 100,000 shares there. So I think that's going to be the first stopping point. If it can take out that 39, then we'd think about that 39.38 level. Yeah, Dennis, uh, the uh, pre-market activity uh, is uh, confirming what you're saying. Uh, bounced off set uh, 39 several, several times today. Uh, so we'll use that as resistance. Um, if you are buying the open here, if we can't hold the 38.54, which was uh, yesterday's high, uh, I would think about exiting that position pretty quickly. Another retailer reporting here this morning is Saks, which is SKS. Stock closed at $10.20. Is actually trading flat right now, so I can't really get a gauge. It, it traded up on the initial report up to 10.49, just a few hundred shares trading up. Now it's trading back at 10.20, so uh, the market hasn't really figured out which way this thing wants to go. Maybe as we approach the open, we're still 50 minutes away. Maybe as we get closer here, we'll get a better feel for whether they like the Saks numbers or not. But as for right now, it's just trading flat there, Joel. Ten bucks is a big psychological level. Kind of right. looks like support. So I think, you know, you'd see some buyers down that 10 area. Uh, above that, it kind of opens up into the top, the high 10s. I'd say the 10 75 area might provide some resistance. What do you think on Saks, Joel? Well, I'll just go back to my uh, familiar retail theme. Uh, when I walk through those stores, I just don't know who the hell buys all those things. Because <laughs> it ain't me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <right? laughs> Ten bucks. Uh, it looks like a double bottom here, so that should be pretty good support. After that, I'd be looking for nine eighty. Uh, you know, coming on the upside, uh, really until we can clear this ten twenty nine level, which was a four day high, uh, I would uh, I would expect to move up to the this uh, triple top here at uh, ten seventy four and seventy five. Backed up by another top at ten eighty seven. So uh, this stock will not trade above. Uh, Above the you know ten eighty ten ninety today that would that would be a monster move for this thing too. Dick Sporting Goods, another retailer reporting forty one seventy five. It's trading after closing thirty nine fifty eight. So it's up over two dollars now. Dix is having a nice lift. I see initial resistance is forty two. Obviously forty two ninety seven is your fifty two week high. Going to be major resistance up there in that forty three area. So I'd imagine sellers for in the high forty two is all over the place. We're still a buck away from there. So I still think you might see some initial resistance at forty two. But I don't. I think the real major resistance is up in that for high forty two is forty. Area, Joel. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you got some momentum going here in the stock. Uh, we have p- topped out at 41.85 in the pre-market, uh, so that would concur with your 41.85 to 42 area as resistance, and of course, the 52-week high. Uh, this is a store where I do spend a little bit of money. You know, I go buy some tennis shoes or some sunglasses and stuff, so I can validate the move in this stock. <laughs> 
Uh, another couple stocks here. APC started taking off last night. That, that's Anadarko Petroleum. They had a nice, uh, a major oil find in Colorado. So that's what the news was on that to give it the lift last night. Uh, stock is trading up at 8103 right now after closing at 7928. So that's giving the stock a real good lift here. It starts to open up though. You start getting above, you know, this 81 area and it starts to open up again. Um, you know, major resistance in the upper 84s. That's a long ways away. Maybe Joel can give a little color in between uh, 81 and 84. Well, can just, you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, here's a stock that was under 60 bucks in October here, and now we're knocking on the door of uh, of uh, you know 84 bucks. Kind of hard to believe, uh, but this 81.73, which was the two-day high, uh, that should be good resistance. Uh, above that, Dennis, you know, you got a slight gap to fill in the stock, but. Uh, I really don't see a whole lot after this 8173. Uh, you know, practically fill the gap at 8221 and then, um, 8296. Uh, it looks like a high from November 7th on this one. You know, kind of wait to see, you know, how the open is. Uh, in the pre-market, it has traded, it has traded up to this 8160 level. So that'll be your initial stopping point, uh, in the session. Coming back on the downside, if this thing, you know, uh, opens up and drops uh, 15, 20 cents, I think, uh, I think I'd have to head for the exits on the long side. Dell Computer reports earnings after the bell here today, so that'll be one of your major drivers after the close. D-E-L-L, obviously the ticker symbol there. The stock is just slightly trading down here, 15.28 after closing at 15.32, so down only four cents. Uh, the market has right a bit. We're down eight in the spoos, but it is showing some relative strength here. Uh, obviously, looking back at the chart, I think the 16 area, I don't think it'll come into play in the regular session, but maybe in the after-hour session, uh, that's going to show you some resistance, initial resistance in that 16 area and uh, I would you know say venture to say you might see some buyers in the low 15s here today yeah Dennis uh, I mean we've only been um, under uh, this $15 level uh, twice since October 20th so uh, once dropping to 1470 the other dropping to 1475 uh, I think you could look for some position squaring ahead of the numbers here. Shorts might want to start bringing it in around the $15 level. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the longs, people that were fortunate enough to buy this back in October under 14 bucks, uh, could, looks like they're loaning, uh, lightening up here in the 15 and a half area. Uh, something to just keep in mind is that we did have fund disclosures yesterday where uh, your mutual funds and your hedge funds disclosed uh, their new positions and their new uh, position sizing. Uh, Warren Buffett's uh, positions, they'll just ring them off here. Took new positions in CVS, uh, Visa, DirecTV, which is DTV, Intel, INTC, General Dynamics, which is GD, Dollar General, which is... Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, G, uh, GD, and then DG, Dollar General. So those are the Warren Buffett positions. Those are probably the ones that move the most on those disclosures. So if you're seeing some relative strength in those issues I just mentioned, it's because uh, uh, it was disclosed that Warren did ha uh, add to his positions, and obviously IBM yesterday, which uh, he had talked about earlier uh, uh, in the morning on CNBC. So is there anything you want to talk about, any of those stocks? Drew, really? I know I rang them all at you there right there. but Yeah, uh, nothing stands out. Did he, did he, did he take any short positions? <laughs> Warren Buffett ain't a big short position guy, so <laughs> he's not your typical hedge fund. He's your buy and hold guy, so some of these other guys do, do take uh, short positions. But, um, you know, I don't see any on his disclosure report there. So Warren Buffett's your buy and holder. He's not a big shorter. I hope he's not getting uh, dyslexia there with uh, the DG and the GD. But uh, I got it right there. I was like, read <laughs> GD, DG. <laughs> so you got a D and you got a G in there. Well, Warren Buffett liked it, I guess. So. <laughs> okay, well, it looks like if Warren was buying during this uh, early in this quarter, he has some good positions going. Uh, whether or not the Spoos can uh, break out of this range after making that 1289 high, uh, we're just kind of meandering between the 1220 and the 1280 level. And we're stuck right in between there. So that's our show for today, folks, our market movers. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with some more market information. Have a good day.